the third law of thermodynamics, and the standard molar entropy. Okay, so let's remind ourselves that the entropy of a substance is related to the number of microstates, and we've talked about that a lot. We talked about thermal and positional entropy. Molecular motion contributes to this entropy, and so we've talked about that to some degree. Now, molecular motions can include, depending on the complexity of the molecule, translations, which they all have, and if they're a little bit more complex, they can have vibrations and rotations as well. The more possible molecular motions, the higher the entropy. The higher the temperature, the more molecular motions. So, what happens if we reduce the temperature to zero Kelvin? Well, essentially the entropy of that substance goes to zero. So the standard molar entropy of a substance at zero Kelvin is zero. And this is a perfectly ordered crystal with only one microstate. So essentially the third law means that absolute entropies can be calculated for a given substance. So the standard molar entropy is the entropy of one mole of a substance under standard conditions. And so that is 25 degrees C or 298K. These values are tabulated as were the heats of formation, delta HFs, that we saw earlier in the course. So here's an example table. Previously, we saw delta HFs, heats of formation, enthalpies of formation. And now we're going to learn about these standard molar entropies. Now notice the units are different. So delta H is in kilojoules per mole, but the standard molar entropy is in joules per mole Kelvin. So we already know that the entropy change for a spontaneous process is positive, and we also can calculate the change in entropy by taking the entropy of the final state minus the entropy of the initial state. So how can we use that? So we can calculate changes in entropy using standard molar entropies. And we can use this tabulated data in order to do that. For this reaction where A is the coefficient and reactant A is represented with a capital letter, same with the others, lowercase b is the coefficient for reactant B, lowercase c is the coefficient for product C, lowercase d is the coefficient for product D, okay? So if we take the coefficient multiplied by the standard molar entropy for product C and add it to the same for product D, then we're going to subtract off what we started with, and that would be the coefficient of reactant A multiplied by its standard molar entropy and the same for B. So that'll give us the change in entropy for that reaction. Now there's another way to write the equation, and again this is similar to what we did for calculating the enthalpy of a reaction. So we have the sum of the molar entropies of the products minus the reactants, and so this is the same equation that we saw on the previous slide. So next we're going to use this information further and discuss Gibbs free energy and spontaneous reactions.